In this video, I will give you my long-term review of the Mac Studio Ultra. I will tell you what I love about it, some of the hardware problems I have, and some of the issues I have with the applications I need to use. So I was fortunate to have had the studio since March, since I know there are, there are still people waiting for theirs, and it's almost June. Uh, I've been using it daily for about two months now. So in terms of power, this thing is insane. I have never used a machine with this much power and being this extremely power efficient. Despite this, I still think that most users, the M1 Mac Mini is probably more than enough to cover 99% of their needs. But for power users and especially creative users, the Mac Studio and the Ultra are game changers to getting work done quicker. But it's not without its issues. So first, let's talk about power consumption. The amount of power that the studio consumes is a fraction of any other system I have ever used. I have a temperature and fan monitor and I have never seen the speed go above 1300 RPM baseline. Uh, I have never even noticed the fans themselves and, and this machine is just whisper quiet. The only way I know the fans are even working is to, to put my hand behind the machine to, f like to feel the airflow. Now, the temperature rarely goes above 43 degrees centigrade. Uh, it averages about 39. I've had it go to 50 when I'm doing like several CPU heavy tasks. And even then the fans would not spin up. They were just quiet. And the studio, if you touch it, it's always been cool to the touch. Uh, the thermal design of the Ultra is, is just off the charts. In my 35 years of using like Intel PCs, I have never seen power consumption this low. The CPU averages uh, below like 10% for like 99% of the time I'm using it and like 5% use when I'm on idle, meaning when I'm not actively using it. And this is with an average of 20 windows open and about the same in background apps. This includes a Windows VM running in the background. So it is crazy. So now let's talk about performance. So the power consumption leads directly into performance. The studio is a beast. I have never had any time where I detected some sort of slowdown. I will be editing video while at the same time running Windows and Mac virtual machines and using ScreenFlow to do screen capture for the B-roll. The studio just brushes it off. And when editing multiple 4K video streams, I get zero lag whatsoever. I, I'm just dumbfounded. And some of my video files can be over 100 gigabytes. If I launch a virtual machine on my Windows desktop, besides the fans spinning up like crazy, I notice a significant lag in my main system with just one virtual machine. On the Mac side, I'm running two at the same time. So I'm blown away with how the studio can handle all that without the CPU seemingly being pushed. I did encounter an odd quirk uh, when the whole system would just stutter for a split second. It was really weird, but it seemed like it was an OS issue rather than a hardware bug. Uh, since updating to Mac OS 12.4, I have not encountered this again. And with 12.3, I, I would see that at least once a day. So now let's talk about some of the software application issues I have encountered. These are the apps that I need to use that I have found to be a major roadblock uh, to using the studio exclusively and ditching my Windows PC. Now, native Mac apps run fine in general, uh, which should since Apple Silicon has been out for almost two years now. I use Parallels VM extensively to run Windows and Mac uh, virtual machines. And as of this recording, Parallels has been updated to allow it to run on Apple Silicon, but there are many things that just don't run well. Uh, when I try to adjust the CPU and memory, I get errors with the automatic setting. I do have some control in manual, but it really doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies. I have random mouse issues where sometimes the scrolling just doesn't work, even though it works fine on the on the main Mac side. Some apps like JetBrains Writer, it's, it's a Windows development ID that I use. Uh, they don't run at all, they just crash on start. And some like uh, Visual Studio Code have issues getting my app to build on both Windows and Mac VM. And it seems to be something to do with the compatibility of using it on ARM. As a Windows developer, I can't really use the tools that I need. There are workarounds, but if you don't have the tools you are really used to in order to do your work efficiently, it's really not a good experience. It's not an Apple issue, but the reality of trying to get something new running on a new architecture. So I am mentioning all this just so you're aware that if you have very specific applications that you need to use, just make sure they work before you commit to the ARM based architecture of the studio. In my case, I still have access to Windows hardware, so my impact is minimal for now. 
I just can't stop using Windows 100%. So now here are some of the hardware issues that I have. I have the MX Master 3 mouse and there's this odd stuttering that happens at times and recently a lot. Uh, it seems like it's a driver issue since the trackpad works fine. Since the unifying receiver is connected via USB, not sure if maybe there's a hardware issue, doubt it. Uh, from what I can gather from online research, this seems to be a firmware issue that has not been addressed yet. I even have tried using Bluetooth alone with the mouse, and that has caused my AirPods to have a ton of interference. Never seen that before. It's very odd. So more than likely, it seems like it's some sort of Bluetooth firmware issue that needs to be addressed, but I can't rule out hardware either. Now, another annoying thing that everybody saw coming. Dust is collecting on the inlet at the base of the studio. Because the inlets are so close to the desk and the gap is pretty small, it seems like it's easy for the studio to just vacuum up any dust in the air. This is why I wish they made the grates removable so it can be cleaned easier. So for now, I just made a monthly reminder to clean uh, as much as I can to prevent a ton of buildup. Another little, put this like a minor quirk, is the light's a bit bright and distracting at times. Uh, it could, would have been nice if it could be dimmed or probably would be nice if it was dimmed along with like maybe night shift. Eh. I also would have liked the power button to be in the front. Um, maybe it's part of the LED, kind of, eh, I know, reach the back, big deal, but minor little things. Uh, I do though have a major issue with the ethernet. Even with 12.4, I can't get past the cable unplugged message uh, when using the ethernet jack. Uh, I will now have to look into it closer and either contact Apple support. It works fine with the dongle, so either the port is broken or there is some major OS bug. So with 12.4, the dongle does not show up as a Thunderbolt bridge anymore. It's weird, because even if I have the Wi-Fi turned off, the internet still works. So I know that the Thunderbolt bridge still works, but it's just not showing up. So these are like a, some of the issues that I found really no different than you would find on a typical Windows machine. They're just a little different. They are frustrating at times and obviously depends on your capacity to accept them. Now, not being able to use my dev tools on a virtual machine is somewhat frustrating to me. I know from experience that these tools tend to really muck up the environment. So it tends up to fill up your hard drive with a ton of extra files, plus one coding mistake, you know, wipe out files, ask me how I know. Despite all this, I would still buy this again in a heartbeat. I have very limited time every week and any time savings I can gain from a computer is crucial to me. With the studio, I found myself finishing a video edit in about two hours less than I did before. Uh, it has made a real difference in my life, so it's worth it to me. But if you're doing anything other than creative work, I would hold off on this as fantastic as it is. The M1 Mac Mini is a fantastic machine for everyday use and you would not be disappointed if you purchased it. Uh, if you're watching this before WWDC, which is coming up in a couple of weeks in June, wait before buying anything. And if you can wait until the fall, that may be a wise decision. Uh, there is a high probability that a new Mac Mini may be coming with the M2 chip. But if you can't wait, look at the Apple refurbished store. M1 Minis are now at about 500 bucks, depends on which capacity you get, and you cannot beat the price for what you get. The only annoying thing with the refurbished store is that you have to check multiple times a day. Stock gets updated constantly and M1 Minis are like flying off the shelf. Another tool that I find indispensable is the iPad. That is my co-pilot when using the studio and it helps me improve my productivity by giving me a third screen to use. That way I don't have to interrupt my work on my main screens. So check out this video here where I give you better tips to how to use your iPad productively. Thanks for watching.